What is the best psychological trick you know to really frick with someone? I just want you to know I personally have no problem with you being at this party. Especially when it's a funeral. Telling people nice socks even when they are not visible. Back in the landline only days, my grandpa would always say we looked good when he greeted us on the phone. When I know someone dislikes me or is indifferent or cold I'll ask them to do simple favors for me. Things like passing me a drink from a table, or doing a small easy menial task and then thank them and tell them they really helped me out. People in general are self-observing and want to make sense of their own actions. By helping you, subconsciously they will slowly change their opinion of you from negative to positive. It's an easy way to build relationships, and although it doesn't frick with someone in a conscious way sometimes people just end up your friend and have no idea how or why. Everything people say about you is true. Yes, I one watched a guy who was getting chewed out by his boss say dang, they weren't lying about you, man, and the look on his boss's face made it clear who'd won that verbal fight. One of my bosses feels the need to contradict anything I say, no matter how benign, she gets in moods, should probably see a therapist. When she does this I just start agreeing with whatever she says but I phrase it a little differently, and make my tone slightly argumentative, but I'm basically a parrot. Sure enough she'll contradict what I say, so I do it again, agreeing with her new statement. We can go on like this for a long time. She argues with herself. It doesn't help anything but I find it amusing. It's the conversational equivalent of my brother grabbing my hand and smacking me in the face with it whilst saying why are you hitting yourself? Stop hitting yourself. Stare in their forehead just between and slightly above the eye line while talking to someone. It throws them off their game and they have a harder time lying to you or trying to influence you. There is a term for the style but I am too lazy to look it up. Meet my eye line gym. I took my kids and two of their friends to the skateboard park when they were about 8 and 10 years old. Some kid, who was about 12, was bullying them constantly. He was with two others. As an adult, I couldn't do a whole lot to the bully and I didn't want to see my group have to leave on account of this kid being a jerk. So I told my oldest to just stare at the bully the next time he was approached by him. Then say your one eyes higher than the other one and then skateboard away. Then, one by one, the other three kids in my group all skated past him, stared, then turned to my kid and said yeah, you're right. The bully went over to his two buddies and he must have asked them if it was true that his eyes were uneven. They all stared at him for a minute. He started crying and left the park. I kinda felt a little bad for him but not as bad as I felt when he was being in butthole to my kids and their friends. This would have gotten your kid punched clean in the nose where I grew up. Glad the gamble worked out for you though. I have a nervous habit of acting like everything is normal when it's not. I don't do it to frick with people intentionally but it does have that effect. I had a boss who was yelling at me. He was that way. I hadn't really done anything wrong. And I kept talking slow sips of my coffee throughout and that really triggered him. I crack up when I think back on him getting all fired up, turning red, then purple, then screaming that I needed to stop drinking coffee. I had a I don't give a f period and I can confirm. People tend to really lose it if you just stay calm for seemingly no reason, even online while writing. Not really a psychological trick but when I was teaching in the inner city, I had a 7th grader yell at me, in front of the whole class, to go frick myself when I said they needed to stop talking and pay attention. I didn't yell at them or scold them, just said we don't speak like that to each other, then made it an absolute priority to greet them at the door and ask how their day was going. A couple weeks of this and I asked if they wanted to help run my powerpoint presentations transition slides when I needed, etc. Before you knew it, they had the positive influence they needed and I had a wonderful ally in helping my class run smoothly. Sometimes when a person acts out against you, it's because they are hurt. Show them you care and you may change their entire outlook. When they want to fight remain calm and agree with them. It frustrates them that they can't rile you up and end up showcasing how much of an butthole they really are, and essentially expose them for being an aggressor manipulator. Give someone a sincere compliment during an argument. If they are decent people, it'll throw them off guard. They will then feel inclined to be more pliable. When in a position of power, offer the person under you a choice of responsibility. This gives them a greater sense of importance because you, a superior, 
offered it to them before others. I worked as a camp counselor and this method worked wonders. Kind off topic but I had a lead once who sometimes let us assign jobs instead of them. It honestly made work so much more enjoyable even though it was so little. If you're playing sports against someone, constantly look into their eyes with a blank stare and no emotion. Looking closely at their face you ask are you okay? Yeah, why? Comma never mind, I guess it's nothing and then just walk away. Ask someone if they know all the words to I'm a little teapot. Emphasis on the word all. Vast majority of the time, grown ass adults will start singing I'm a little teapot. When they get to the end, shout second verse. I stole this one from my ex-girlfriend who was a licensed clinical psychologist and kind of a psycho. She had some good traits too, but she was a genuinely scary person. Everybody has little conversational or postural tells that can let perceptive people know they are feeling uncomfortable or awkward. She would tell me what mine were and then point them out every single time I did them. I was happy and not knowing about them tbh. I notice these two but don't point them out cause that's a shitty thing to do and only makes people more uncomfortable. <laughs> Laughing at a bully who is obviously all bark and no bite. Had a female friend in high school getting bullied by a boy who was significantly smaller than she was. He only ever gave her issues when he was with his friends. So it was clear that the goal was to impress them. She wanted to kick his ass and she knew she could stomp him. But didn't want to get suspended so I told her that next time he puts on his show, laugh. Laugh harder than you've ever laughed before. Make yourself cry laughing if you can, and watch what happens. By golly she took my advice and laughed in his face the next time he verbally attacked her. She was with another friend, and the friend joined in on the laughter. He kept going, calling her different names until his face went red, and still kept going even though he ran out of new insults, causing him to repeat himself. His friends were originally laughing with him, but after only about a minute of this they stopped him. Dude, they're laughing at you. This is getting awkward. Just stop and leave it alone. He never tried bullying her again, and I just pulled that idea out of my ass on a whim. Screaming lightweight B-A-B-Y-Y-Y before lifting heavy to make the weight lighter. Nothing but a peanut. If you're on public transport and you don't want anyone sitting next to you, when your victim, potential transport neighbor, looks like they are about to sit next to you, smile at them and pat the seat next to you. This is great until it backfires. Whoever sits next to you after that is going to be a bit odd. When you walk into an elevator, don't turn around. Just stand in front of someone and stare at them. And don't press any buttons. Just get off on the floor they get off. As a teacher, during a test look over one of the students shoulder, reading what they are writing. Then say out loud, make sure you are reading the questions right. That is so evil. Stop talking, they will babble on, far more than they want to. Please don't, I hate the feeling when I talk too much and don't get a response. I'll talk for a long time then you have to hear me talk about Jurassic Park and nobody wants that. When talking to someone, just hand them stuff. I've done that last week, met with a friend for lunch and had a crumpled up receipt in my pocket, as we were saying our goodbyes and whatnot. I handed him the receipt and he just took it without question Lmeo. When someone asks me to confirm something I say no and then repeat what they just said. Example. Hey, the meeting is today at 4 right? No, it's at 4. Giving people a thumbs up instead of the middle finger when they are driving like crap. Better yet, drive beside them, honk your horn, signal for them to roll down their window, then keep driving like nothing happened. When asking someone something, nod your head a little bit, and they'll probably agree to do it and can't figure out why. Place index finger on target's shirt. Say dear friend, what hast thou on thy garments? When target looks down, simply elevate hand into target's face. So endeth the trick. If you're annoyed that someone is staring at you stare back. Hold eye contact and don't let go. If they're still staring even after this shoot them a kiss, usually gets them to look away. Have to say this is good advice but does not work in Portugal. Those M will stare you down no blinking or anything. Worst part is they aren't being aggressive or rude. Just oblivious and nosy. Confusing people is always the best strategy. If someone is yelling ask thee if they want sand. Are they in an uncomfortable situation? Ask if they want sand. 
Are they crying? Comfort them. Then say in a calm voice do you want some sand? Works every time. This is. Fantastic. I'm gonna go get some sand. Mid conversation. Look them dead in the eye. Say wake up and immediately go back to your conversation without missing a beat. I feel like if someone did this to me and like really sold it I would question my reality for the foreseeable future. Hey yeah socks are untied partner. You dropped your pocket. I've got a mate. Let's call him Steve. Because that's his name. Anyway. If you ever ask him to pass you something he'll do the fake throw thing. Gets everyone 100% of the time. If you're looking for something he'll randomly point at some place and say there it is causing you to look at said random spot for a few moments before you realize he's fricking with you. Frick you Steve. Too late. Bid my successful brother who is a world class scientist is always traveling so I take care of his lovely apartment. Once I was there trying his new sound system when a cat showed up. I had all the windows open to ventilate so not so weird. I feed him but then I decided to do a little experiment I turned on the sound system bep 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 and then I fed the cat with a little piece of ham I did this at least 10 times. Next week same cat same method. A couple of days after two cats and the same thing I did it for months with different cats. Now every time he want to use his super cool and expensive sound system has a choir of cats asking for food. He even show this trick in a party full of PhDs and everyone had a theory about it. He is really mad about it. This guy discovered Pavlovian response. Just say you're going to play Rock. But then play Wonderwall. Ask them, what negative thing would you change about yourself, besides the obvious, and watch the confusion. Pulling out a pack of gum and offering it to someone, but not taking one for myself before putting it away. Whenever someone is fake whining about something, looking for either a laugh at their self deprecation, or reassurance, I say no shame, they backpedal, and I keep insisting hey, there's no shame, I'm not here to judge you, they stop talking about it. Gaslighting. Gaslighting people makes them question their own memories, it truly fricks people up if they trust your version of things. Just as a side note, don't do this to anyone, seriously. I was raised with parents who did this to me all the time. I can confirm that it leave lasting trauma. Anytime anyone asks for confirmation on if something did actually happen when I'm explaining something I panic and start thinking it might not have happened and I'm making it up or remembering wrong. Don't gaslight people. Tell people the truth. Freaks them out. I mean, on a serious and very heavy note. All the people I've worked with on their childhood psychological trauma were abused for the right reasons. So hitting someone while telling them you love them is a good way to do it. Don't forget the part about only having to do it because of their actions, and how it hurts the hitter more than the hitty. When talking to someone face to face, randomly look over their shoulder with a growing look of horror. But once they have checked to see what you were looking at and have turned back around to face you, continue speaking normally. Ignore any expressions of puzzlement. They'll just ask why you did that face. My fiance, his brothers and his dad all do this thing that we all refer to as the thing. They'll just pretend to give you incredibly false information or pretend they have no clue what you're talking about randomly with the most obvious crap. It'll be stuff like, we'll drive past some palm trees and my fiancé will say hey you know they got their name because the guy who discovered them thought they looked like hands or one of them will pretend to have never heard of the movie Back to the Future before or something. They always give it up and start laughing but oh my god. Thankfully, I've been with him long enough that I can see it coming from a mile away and I catch him with you're doing the thing. But for everyone else it's an absolute trip because they're so believable with it. Don't break eye contact. You have been visited by the hamster of joy. Comment I like chicken to live a happy and full of joy like the joy hamster life. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.